Welcome to another episode of Simple Sarah. Today on the show, we're going to make deep fried tater wedges, and then I'm going to make a garlic aioli dip to dip your tater wedges in. So let me show you what we're doing. Now we're going to make our dip first, so it has time to blend with all the seasons and stuff. Alright, in my little power chef, we got the little whipping blade, uh, paddle thing, and then I've got a cup of mayo. Now you could use plain Greek yogurt if you don't want to use mayo. Two tablespoons of um, grated Parmesan cheese, a uh, half a tablespoon of uh, Dijon mustard, um, salt and pepper to taste. I put a little smoky paprika, or you could use original um, garlic powder and onion powder. And don't worry about I'll put the I'll put the recipe under underneath the video for the amounts. And then I roasted two heads of garlic. That's what we're going to put in here. And it's just soft. You can just squish your little in here. This is really hot. It just came out. Let me see. I'm going to have to get me a little towel. Normally, I'll cool your little garlic a little bit. So, I'm just going to squish them out. Your little cloves get soft and sweet and roasted. They come right out of the papery skins. I'll do one head of garlic, a whole head of garlic, and then we'll blend it and see if it needs more. We might need the second one. I just blended it, I just roasted that extra one just in case. Got the cloves. It just depends on how much garlic flavor you want. You don't want the papery skin. So if some, one of the papery skins drop in, get it out. Because that's not good to eat. We got another clove right here. Let's see. Make sure. Yep, they're all out now. Okay, so that was one little head. So let's put on our little thing. And blend it up. Now your garlic is so soft, it's just going to mash into all your mayo and spices. Okay, let's look at it. Okay, let me get me a little spoon and see if we need the other head of garlic. The other head of garlic we're going to put in. So I want it real garlicky. If you have like a big huge head of garlic then you could just use one big one. These were kind of small. Making sure I got all my garlic out. And I do. Okay. Let's put a little top back on and a whisk and mix it again. And when you roast garlic, it's not as powerful as raw garlic and stuff. Okay. 
Okay, let's get us another spoon. I just want to taste it and see if it's got enough seasoning now. Salt and pepper and all the other seasonings. I got me another clean spoon. Yep. That's good. So there's one over here dipping. Well, so I think I'm going to put a little bit of lemon juice too in. Well. So, kind of brighten it up. So, we'll do a half of a lemon. Juiced. You could even put some of the lemon zest if you wanted to in it. Okay. Now let's give that a whip. Okay. Get me another spoon. And taste it so if you need the other lemon half. I want it, don't want it too powerful of lemon. I just want a little tiny balance of it. Yep. Just that half one. I just want a little subtle of lemon flavor. So there is our roasted garlic. Oh, Lydia. And we're going to dip in the tiger wedges in. Okay, let me move some of stuff out of my way. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now let's mix our mixture that we're going to be dipping our tater wedges in. So, I will put up the list in the description of the recipe. We got um, cornstarch, all-purpose flour, oregano, salt and pepper, smoked paprika, garlic powder, and onion pepper, and that's it. <clears throat> so, we're just going to mix everything together. And then we're just going to pour some water in until we get a batter consistency that we like. I got a, I got a cup of water. I just don't know if I'm going to use a whole, the whole cup. A little bit more. And that's just water right out of the tap. Oh yeah, I might need a little bit more than a cup. You just never know. Yeah. The rest of it goes in. You don't want it too thin or too thick. You don't want it just in the medium. Oh yeah, we're going to need some more water. So let me get some more water. I got me another cup here. And we're just going to pour a little bit more in. Just be careful, don't slosh in it. You want a coating just that will coat your tiger wedges. Now you can use any kind of seasoning you want. You want lemon pepper. You want some steak seasoning down in here. You don't have to use the seasonings like I do. Or if you just do salt and pepper, that would be nice too. A little bit. Just a tad bit more. Sorry about the scraping and all the noise. Okay, I think that's good. Because it runs off the fork real good. Alright. So, let me bring you a little bit closer now. Okay. Make sure you're in frame. Okay, I got some taters that I just peeled. 
then a slice and a half, and a slice and a half, and a half. So you made quarters. Um, I did several because we got some people to feed. So you can leave the peeling on or off. After I do that, I just rinse them real good in a bowl, drain it, and then put them in a big kettle. Poured over some cold tap water, some good pinch of salt, brought it up to a bowl, let them boil for five minutes, um, brought them out, and then put them on a, a plate lined with some pepper towels just to soak up the water to get it off of there. And I'm only been letting them dry for about 30 minutes. And so that's what we've done so far to them. Um, we've also got a little pan of oil heating up. If you see my hush puppy video, you'll know what kind of pan and oil we use. You can use a high powered, uh, high powered, <laughs> a high temp oil that can handle the fry, like coconut, peanut, avocado, vegetable, canola, whatever. So, we're just going to take some of our powder wedges. And then we're going to drop, drop them in and coat them. Now you will have to do this in batches. You don't also want to crowd your your little pan that you have oil in. So let's just bury them and get them all good and coated. The cornstarch is going to even help with um, the crispness and stuff. So. I'll just let them sit in there until my oil heats up. Now, I use rice and potatoes, but you can use any taters that you want to. And then remember, you can use any kind of seasonings you want to in here. Um, with your cornstarch and flour mixture. And don't worry, I'll put the exact amounts, how much water I use for my consistency that I like and everything down in the bottom of the video in the description. Okay, let me pull you over so you can see the oil now. Okay, I've got a little saucepan with some vegetable oil in it coming up. It's the same oil that I fried the hush puppies yesterday in. I just, um, we're just heating it back up. I actually covered this whole thing last night, but I cooled it down completely and then covered it up with this little lid and just stuck the whole pan in the refrigerator because I knew I was going to be frying today, so I didn't, I didn't strain it or anything like that. Now, I will today after I get done later on. And what I do is I strain my oil real good through a mesh strainer. Uh, metal mesh strainer down into like a um, funnel and then it goes in a, a mason jar a couple mason jars whatever you need to fit uh, for all your oil to fit and then put it in the refrigerator and that keeps it from going rancid um, so you can use it several times for frying you just bring it out um, um, let it get to room temperature a little bit put it in your whatever you're frying in your your fryer or your saucepan and then heat your oil up the only thing is um like if you're going to fry fresh i would wait to do it the last time the last time you want to fry because that flavors your oil and then your oil is going to taste like fish so everything that you fry for that will taste like fish so anytime i want to do fish i do it i put it on the menu it's the last time that I want to fry and use my oil up. And then I discard it. Um, I put it down in, um, after it's cooled, I put it down into a, uh, a coffee, uh, coffee container or a butter dish or something with the lid. Tape the lid down and then it goes right in the trash can. You can see it bubbling. Let's test her oil and see if it's hot enough. I'm just going to take a little bit of this little batter right here. And we're just going to drop it in. Yep, we're good to go. 
And if it fries real good, you know it's ready. And I'm going to get this little thing out. Um, I had water on my little spider thingy, so don't freak out. Okay. Water and oil don't mix, so make sure you, uh, um, cause that's what I scoop my tater wedges out of my water. Just make sure you pat it off and dry it real good. Okay. So, let's grab our tater wedges. And just drop in slowly. You want your oil 350 degrees. Now, there's thermometers that you can click on this to keep your oil at a good temperature. Or you can adjust it and just know, like I do. I mean, these already been cooked, so it ain't going to take very long for them to just fry up. Because your tater's done, we're just getting the outside getting golden and crispy. And one more tater wedge. Like I said, you have to do these in batches. Okay, let me wash my hand off. Get me a plate. And some pepper towels for draining. It won't take very minute, very long, maybe two to five minutes. On them. And then you also need to go ahead and flip them. Let me, whoops, I'm sorry. I just knocked it with my big old foot. See, it won't take very long for them. It's just like a like a batter. It's so good on them. It's just a very unique. Now you don't have to use the batter like I do. You could just do um, all your dry spices, and then sprinkle a little bit of oil on your tater wedges and then sprinkle all your seasons down in it, mix them and then do steep from you don't have to do a batter so let's put that back there for when we get these out you look at them and i'm going to get these little tidbits out too because they these are good little crunchies to eat you could even do put a little bit of beer instead of water and it'd be like a beer batter look good this is a good coating to coat fish and all kinds of yummy stuff with mushrooms um, other veggies that you can deep fry zucchini and squash okay they're just gonna go over on the plate and drain so we're just wanting them the batter to get done remember that the potato is already done so let's dump some more of these little babies in here And if a tater breaks on you, don't freak out. You can still fry both halves. Okay. All right. Let me get this little tater up. Drip off the excess into the oil. A lot of deep fryers, like I had a fry daddy that would turn your knob to, and it kept the temperature whatever you put it on kept the oil but it died I've had it for a few years so I need to get me another deep fryer but you can do the old school way like we did with the hush puppies and we're doing with the tater wedges in a pan with some oil and then I think I'm going to fit one more in remember you just don't want to crowd it because then you'll bring your oil temperature down. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands, rinse it off real quick. Where I got all that batter and stuff. And we're just gonna keep doing this till we get them all good and fried and stuff. And you can actually even freeze these after you fry them, let them cool. Uh, I put them in a freezer container with like parchment paper or wax paper in between um 
and then just bring them out and then put them in the toaster oven or air fryer or oven just to warm them back up. And sometimes you get one that'll stick together to another, so just break it apart. Let me get these little crunchies out. Because if you leave your little crunchies in, they'll start getting brown, a very dark brown, and then run your oil. And what we're going to have today is just Morningstar, today, uh, for lunch and for dinner. We're going to have a Morningstar Griller Patties, hot burger patties. And then I'm just going to cook them up in a skillet with a little bit of olive oil. Um, I'll let them choose their toppings. I'm going to have lettuce, tomato, and onion. And then also I'm going to have leftover slaw from yesterday where we had... I made that to go over with our hush puppies and our um, gardenia fish sticks and stuff. So they can put some salt on a burger, whatever they want to do. Um, and then I got some regular burger patties I'm going to put over in another skillet. The ones that eat meat. And they can do cheese, whatever. Pickles, all kinds of good toppings. Another, another few, 30 seconds maybe on these. You'll know the golden brownness that you want them to be. And like I said, you could just do it with the seasoned oil. Or you don't have to make like a paste batter. You could just put your flour down in there. Um... With all your seasonings, and then you would have to have something wet to dip your tater wedges in. So I would do put a little bit of oil, or dip them in like an egg, so they adhere to them. Or you could dip them in water, maybe again, and then dip them in the dry. There's just so many versatile ways for you to do tater wedges. I'm kind of doing these like old school way that um. I remember that sometimes in special occasions the uh, lunch ladies would make for us like when the school would start ending. So let me duck some of more of these in here. They would make like a batter like this. Sometimes if it's regular way, you know, just with some seasoning and stuff. and it, Usually they baked them. But once in a great while, they would do the deep fried ones, and they were so, so good. They never did give us, like, a dipping sauce. We just used ketchup. So. Old school memories. That was when I was in high school, though, so. Way back in the day. Remember to drop them down and away from you. So that way, if a wool splashes, it don't get you, okay? Be cautious when you do wool frying. And then you could reuse this batter. If you have more batter for stuff or something else. Like I said, deep fried veggies or whatever you want to do. It'll last in the fridge for about a week. Yep, that's all on that one. Okay, let me wash my hands again. You just gotta keep repeating the process. Break them apart so they won't stick. Sometimes they want to do stick to each other. Alright. Okay, while we wait, we'll just dunk some more and have them ready. Have you ever had deep fried green beans? They're really good. I had them one time in a restaurant. Let me get some of them crunchies out. Crunchies over here. This is a 
really good batter to do on fish and stuff. Is it really holds? It reminds me of the batter on um, Long John Silver, but it's not like a beer batter or a real thick, thick batter like they do. It's similar to it. Now I have a video, old school video of how to do Long John Silver's fish a few years ago, so you might want to check out that video too. I'm just going here and toss them around. Just a little bit more browner. <coughs> Sorry about that. I had to go off to the side and cough. I'm still getting over the sinus station. I still got to take my antibiotics and um, steroids. You know it's that time of year. And I, when I heat them a little, I'll turn on the high when I know it's getting good and hot. Then I'll turn it down to eight. And that's usually what about I leave it on. Because I, I found that temp leaves it around 350, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, got them out. Let's put some more in. more of these in there. Remember to do it in small batches. And I can sneak them other three in. Okay. Now we're done with that plate. Let me move it out. start getting. We got some crunchies I need to take out. And then some more crunchies. While then we're finishing, I'm going to get me a little bowl to put my Oli dip in.
That's just me scraping the oil out of the container. I tried it out to do too much noise in the background. Okay, let me test these little things and see how they are. Roll them around. Done. So let's put them over there. Get some more cursor. Okay, now let's do some more. I'm garnishing our alley dip, and I'll show you in a minute, over here, in the background. One that is just stuck together. Break it apart. There we go. Almost done, and I got three or four more to fry. Them out there. Okay, now let's dump our last four, and then we'll be done.
it so they won't stick to each other. Okay, I'm gonna let them fry. Move this out of my way. Don't need that more. We're gonna move you over here. Make sure you can see. Okay, now. Here is our tag of roaches. I hate the pain, sorry. With my elbow. Okay, I'm gonna garnish with just some cilantro or parsley, green onions, whatever you want to use. I'm just cutting them up with some scissors. Flip on out. However you want to garnish them, you don't have to even garnish them. there don't they look good I think they look good and then here is our garlic I'll eat it garnished it with green onions and cilantro okay let me find a little cool tater that won't burn me up okay. now let's dip into our garlic only for trout Really, really good. Really good. Alright, that's all in this episode. See you the next one. Bye, everybody.